Hello, today we're going to start creating the blind flange. Very simple project that uses a few basic tools, sketch, some basic dimensioning, as well as um, the whole tool. So what we're going to do, start new, open up standard.ipt, and we're going to wait for that to load. All right. Now that we're in sketch mode, we're actually going to click finish sketch again. And we're going to open up the origin and hold shift, right click, visibility. We're going to turn all these on so we can see them. So we can tell what we're drawing on. Again, just a quick reminder, if you need to go back to isometric view, just click press F6 on your keyboard and that'll bring you back to full isometric view. Um, we want to produce our blind flange this way, just like it is in the packet. So we'll click on this, the YZ plane, and click Create Sketch. That brings us here. I'm actually going to rotate this around so we're vertical here. Um, now we want to start drawing. Um, what we want to do is work with our origin here. So I like to center all of my stuff around our origin. Uh, makes it easier in the future when you get into more complex drawings. So, to sketch the blind flames, we're just going to start with a simple circle our circle doesn't really matter the particular size we'll give the size later remember that's driven dimensioning so drew our circle we're going to add a dimension to it it's going to be if we look at our packet 6.25 inches in diameter so it's a little larger for the screen we'll zoom out and we're going to hit finish sketch zoom out again now we have our circle we're now in three-dimensional mode here we're done with our two two-dimensional sketch going to click extrude notice that it previews what we're doing here we're going to open this up so we can actually see has distance set to one inch there's a few different options there I want distance uh, our plate for this is a half an inch thick so we'll change that and I like to make things symmetrical almost always um, just makes any updates you're going to do in the future a lot easier uh, make sure your output here is solid and not surface So make sure that's solid and we'll just click OK. And now we have our solid object. We're going to click on the face of it because that's where we want to put the holes. And we're going to draw what's called a construction circle. Uh, one thing to remember about construction line types and center line types, which are located up here, um, is that it's like turning on a light switch. Once you turn it on, it stays on. It's not going to automatically turn off. So we're going to select circle and then we're going to select construction. So we're drawing a construction circle. Again, same center point, so that's convenient. And we'll just draw our circle roughly to the size that it needs to be. Notice that the line is dashed. That indicates that it's a construction line. And we're going to dimension that. Our diameter on this one is 5 and 5 eighths. So I can put in 5 space, 5 slash 8, or I could type 5.625, whichever you prefer in terms of um, fractions or decimals. Next, rather than putting circles and then doing a cut extrusion on all those circles, I like to use points when I create holes. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn off construction and I'm going to turn off dimension, hit escape. That'll get us from dimension mode. And we're going to go to point and we're going to place a point right here where our y axis intersects our construction circle. We've done that. We'll hit escape to turn point off. And now what we want to do is array this. In AutoCAD, use the array command. You could simply type that. Over here, we're going to use circular pattern. So we have a rectangular pattern. We could mirror. We could do a circular pattern. Circular pattern, select our geometry. So I'll click on our point. And then axis, just click our center point. Or you could even click the circle. Notice that it previews. Our pieces here, it also t shows you the direction that we're going around the circle, which is very convenient. If I wanted to reverse that, I could reverse it using that button. Uh, we want a total of 12 points, so we'll switch our 6 to 12. Double check and make sure everything's nice and evenly spaced how we want it. And we'll click OK. Now we'll finish our sketch. We've laid out our points. It's like uh, using a center punch to lay out your holes, because holes are measured to the center point not to the edge now we're going to use the hole tool so we'll open up hole and we want to make sure that we can see what we're doing here 
Um, make sure that it says placement from sketch and we're going to find center so we have all of these points. If you go around it will eventually sometimes pick up on what you're trying to do. Not always. Um, so we've got to click each one. But it finds all these. We have all 12 of our holes laid out. And we're going to give them the diameter that we desire, which is 0.5. Termination. We have a few options here. We could set a specific distance. Through all means it goes through the entire part. Or we could click 2, meaning that from wherever your sketch is located to, you can then click a termination point. Uh, I like to keep, for this particular product, through all is a good one to use. Click OK. And then our blind flange is done. And we're going to click Save.